Hey y'all, this week's quick tip is actually going to show you Google's new AI chatbot, Bard, versus ChatGPT. So let's get into it. So I've had access to ChatGPT for several months. I've used it. I'm pretty familiar with what it is doing and can do. Um, here it is over on the right hand side. On the left hand side is Bard. And can I just say for the record, oh, we need a new name. I don't know. It's just it's just so ugly to me. Um, not that Chat GPT rolls off the the tongue so easily, but um, I'm sure it's an acronym for something. But I I really I really want Google to give it a good name because I don't I don't like I don't like it. So what we're going to do is we are going to go head to head. We are going to give them the exact same prompt and we're going to see how they perform. So teachers, uh, just for the purposes of this experiment, I am using a relatively simple prompt. The better your prompt, the better your output. That is well known. Um, There are many jobs now appearing as prompt engineers. So keep that in mind. Uh, but I purposely want to go simple because I want to see which one can do better with less. So just keep that in mind as we progress through this exercise. The other thing I do want to mention is that I do have concerns about putting these chatbots in front of our K-12 students. I would not set a student in front of either one of these experiments at this point in time. Okay, Um, I've done a whole podcast on it. I've done some recommendations, but I just want to put that out there. I am not supporting putting this in front of students. Teachers, you can use this to your heart's content. That is up to you. Um, But what we have here, I want you to notice on the home pages of both BARD and ChatGPT are some, some warnings, some limitations. And actually, ChatGPT even has a pop-up that appears most of the time. I don't know why it's not here right now, but um, that is really outlining some of the things that you need to know. So let's start with ChatGPT. May occasionally generate incorrect information, may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content, and it has a limited knowledge of world and event after 2021. I am using the free version. I am not in GPT-4. I am not paying for that right now. Um, so I just want to make that clear. Um, so this is this is not a head-to-head with the latest version of GPT, just chat GPT. I just wanted to do this as an experiment, and I think it's it's interesting to, to study how these two are performing. Now, the limitations on BARD, first of all, it is a Google experiment. And if you're familiar, I have been talking about Google experiments, many of which are related to AI and machine learning. And um, down here at the bottom, you'll say BARD may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. These are all reasons not to put these tools in our K-12 students' hands. Um, That being said, I do believe there are many possible ways to use these things for good and not evil that we can use these to improve education. We're going to start with ChatGPT. Here's my prompt. Create a lesson plan for an eighth grade language arts class that teaches literary elements and engages students through a choice board. Because right now I'm very fascinated at using these tools to help me create choice boards specifically. So I wanted to see what it could do. So here is what happens in chat GPT. Now I have done this one before. So um, it's going to be interesting to see live how this changes. It's giving me a title, it's giving me the grade level, the objectives, the materials, kind of that typical lesson plan format that so many of us are familiar with that we don't actually use every single day when we're writing a lesson plan. So we've got the procedure, we've got an introduction, how we're going to introduce the concepts, and then the choice board itself. So um, let's see. And then to share and discuss. It's not actually creating the choice board. However, um, like I said, the other iterations of this and some of the plugins, I believe we'll be able to create this um, when we go text to image and creation here instead of just the chat bot here. 
and then some extensions. Okay. Like this, this is something I can work with. This is something I can continue to prompt to get more of what I want. But um, actually just, you know, spitting out the exact choices for the choice board is more of what I was looking for. But like I said, I purposely gave it a very vague prompt. Now, let's see what Bard can do. Same prompt. Bard is definitely taking longer. All right. So we did also get our um, subject, topic, grade level, time, and objectives. And apologies, trying to keep this side by side. So it is getting a little bit smushed here. Uh, materials, whiteboard or chart paper and markers. That's it's funny coming from a chat bot, isn't it? Procedure. Uh, begin by reviewing, explain, distribute the choice board as students work, circulate after students have completed, lead a discussion, conclude, and the students will be assessed on their ability to identify and analyze literary elements in a piece of literature and assessed on their ability to create their own piece of literature using the five. Wow. Okay. Um, and then some differentiation options as well as extension. All right, so this this actually turned out different than the first time that I actually gave this prompt. They were more different than they are right now. But um, one, keep in mind, I have already prompted it before. It gets smarter every time you ask it a question, and it gets smarter with the more information that you provide. So one of the things that we can do with our prompt is then to ask it, can, not can, ask it, create the choice board with nine well-balanced student activities for the Lesson plan. Okay, so again, I was vague, could have made this a much more in depth prompt, but I wanted to see what it would give me. So I asked it for nine activities. So there are three under activity one, there are three under activity two, and there are three, three, oh, there's way more than nine. Okay. Um, lots, lots and lots of things that we could grab from this, but it didn't actually give me what I asked. I asked for nine and it gave me much more. Now, it's also not giving me specifics. Like it's not giving me the short story. It's not giving me even a link to it. Now, if I ask ChatGPT for the same thing, let's see how it compares. It's actually giving me directions. Choose at least three. So it's kind of going, and I said nine, which is, is kind of that tic-tac-toe board option and it is giving me those nine different activities. Now, I could have gotten more specific. I said literary elements. Now, we could have broken this down into one. As I said, I just want to see what these do with the information. So to me, this would have been more useful for what I was looking for. However, I could definitely still have used this over here. Now, um, I just think this is this is interesting to compare. A lot of people have been very curious with Google and is Google trying to catch up? My opinion is that Google's doing a lot of things behind the scenes that we don't know yet. I think the way that we are going to use AI inside workspace is already being seen. Um, you can see that in some of those updates that I shared in an earlier video. I'll have that link down below. But also that... Um, the way we search for information is about to change drastically. And Google, I guarantee you, has been working on that for many years. In fact, Google has been 
in the land of AI for a very long time, but um, there there is something to be said for stirring the water and maybe forcing things to happen a little bit faster because of the advancement that ChatGPT has offered. So um, just again, if you want to use either one of these tools, I am using ChatGPT. It is free. Um, you can log in with your Google account. <laughs> and then Bard, you have to actually sign up to be a tester. So I got in with an early group. I've had access to this almost immediately when it was released. So um, you can go test it out and see what you think. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, ring the bell, and subscribe so that you get notified when new videos come out each week. And if you haven't already, hop on over to shakeuplearning.com and check out all of our free resources there. Bye, y'all.